Our next topic is coordinates in space. This is our last topic. Um, and it's a little unusual. You know, we live in a three-dimensional world. However, we spend a tremendous amount of time for years and years teaching you how to do math in two dimensions. Very rarely do we move over into the three-dimensional world. Sometimes we're talking about polynomials and higher order, higher order polynomials like with third degree, fourth degree, and so forth. Do we even begin to intimate that there's more than two dimensions? Quadratic equations are two-dimensional functions. Okay? They have width and they have length. Linear equations are one-dimensional functions. Okay? They're basically, you know, polynomials of one degree. Linear uh, equations are polynomials of one degree or in one dimension. Quadratics are polynomials of second degree or in two dimensions. Only when we get into to, um, cubic and so forth do we have polynomials that even begin to approximate what three dimensions would be and how we might look at them. Okay, so here we're going to do this, and this is some of the most important work we'll do and we'll introduce you to because your math from this point on will include three dimensions. Engineering has, no, has nothing to do with two dimensions. Oh, well, you'll do some two-dimensional vectors and things like that, but they're very simple. Three-dimensional static vectors, three-dimensional dynamic vectors. Physics has to do with three-dimensional forces. Okay? Quantum physics has to do with, quantum mechanics has to do with the forces in three dimensions of the microorganism. Atomic. Okay? Atomic distances, atomic relationships and forces that hold those atoms together and things like that. So what we're looking at is the real world now. However, it will be difficult, just like we talked about in chapter 12 when you started doing isometric drawings and orth orthogonal group drawings and beginning to look at those and take them into three dimensions. It's difficult. It's challenging. Why? Because you're not used to it. However, this is the world we live in. Okay? Challenge my students. I simply say, if you want to, you know, if you find it difficult to describe a three-dimensional world, then go back to a two-dimensional. We don't live in a two-dimensional world. If you think you do, go, to, go hug your two-dimensional mom. Go jump into your two-dimensional bed. Eat food off your two-dimensional plate. Drink your favorite beverage out of your two-dimensional glass. Not going to get very much, are you? So, we need to learn how to look at three dimensions. So what we got is when we gra we're graphing points in space or in three dimensions, we use what's called an ordered triple instead of an ordered pair, and it represents x, y, and z coordinates, okay? x, y, and z. Now, in this case, what happens is we're used to y being the vertical and, and uh, x being the horizontal axes, but... <clears throat> When we go to three axes, the x and y is what we call the horizontal axes. And then z becomes the vertical axes. And so you have to begin to look at it that way. I draw mine this way obliquely. Most of the time the y is straight across, the z is straight up and down, and x comes out at this angle. I like it like this because uh, it's easy to fit on isometric dot paper. Let me get you a piece of that paper so you can actually see what it looks like in that. Uh, you can take isometric dot paper, turn it into three-dimensional graph paper. It's pretty simple to do. Show you a sample of that. I'm sure you can also go out on the internet and go three-dimensional graph paper, and it will probably give you some sources for that. This is how you would take isometric dot paper and turn it into three-dimensional graph paper. Okay? Notice what I do, what it looks like. All right, does that help? <coughs> so that's what I'm going to do here. So we're going to take the point. <coughs> excuse me. Negative 2, 4, 3. This is our X. This is our Y. And this is our Z. <coughs> so we're going to take a negative 2 X positive 4y and a positive 3z. Okay? So let's mark these, number one. And this is our x, is our origin, which is, is of course, 0, 0, 0. So this is going to be 
negative 2, so there's that corner. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's that corner. And there's that corner. <coughs> now I need to get a ruler so that I can do these and do them appropriately. Get them done right. Okay? Okay, because this is going to be parallel. Now I'm going to do the vertical line. This is going to be... It's going to go like three. Oh, shit, I can do that. This is going to go up to there. Okay. Oh, and I will... Eventually we'll get a back corner in there and we'll get it going too. Uh, let me see if I can get that back corner going. Uh, okay, it's going to be parallel to the y-axis and it's going to be look like this. Okay. And we're going to go up the same amount there. So here we've got our corners marked, I think, of everything we've got. Let's go ahead and draw these in and see what we come up with here. See what it looks like. That would be there. This would be here. I'm going to draw this to get a clean, nice, clean, straight line. That would be there. And this would be here. And then, of course, this would be here. Now let's dot the ones that we can't see. Okay. All right. So there is our rectangular prism. Okay. Oh, sorry. Got one here. Now we're going to label this A, B, this is C, this is D. This point is E, F, G, and H. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to label and identify each one of those points. Give the coordinates A. B, C, D. A is pretty easy. Why? Because it happens to be on the origin, so it's just going to be 0, 0, 0. B is directly above it. So what's its X and Y going to be? All it has is its vertical, doesn't it? It just has a Z, so it's going to be 0, 0, 3. Okay? C is... Let me see, it has no x because it's above d, which is right on the y-axis, so it has no x, so that's going to be 0. It has a y, okay, which is going to be 4, and it is obviously off the x and y-axis, so it's going to have a 3 here. Now, d is on the y-axis, so it's not going to have an x or a z. So it's going to be 0 with those two, and it's going to have a 4 there. Okay? All right. Let's come over here and do F, G, no, we got to do it E, F, G, H, E, F, G, and H. So let's do E. It goes backwards on the x-axis, 2, so that's a negative 2. It's on the x-axis, so it can't have a y, and it can't have a z, so that's just going to be 0, 0. Okay, anything on an axis is only going to have that axis. Okay, now F is directly above E. So, it's got to have that. It's got to have a Y of that, and it's going to have a Z because it's above of 3. Now, G has everything, doesn't it? Why? Because it's out here in space. It's our point out here in space. Okay, so it's going to have a negative 2. It's going to have a 4, and it's going to have a 3. H is below it. What is it not going to have? H is below it on the XY plane. If it's on the XY plane, the Z has to be 0. It's going to have an X, and it's going to have a Y. So this is a negative 2, a 4, and a 0. Okay? Now then, let's play with what we call the distance formula. Distance formula for this thing is this. 
x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus, what do we now have? How many distances do we have? We're in three dimensions, not just two. So we've added that third dimension. Really simple. Okay? So that's that. How about midpoint? Our midpoint formula. What's it going to look like? We're going to have an x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, comma, z1 plus z2 divided by 2. Okay? So that's what that's going to look like. Oh, let's get this right here. Squared. Okay? So we're extending these equations, okay, to the third dimensions. We're adding that third dimension in there. This is the same way we would others. So let's find the distance between, let's find A to G. A, G. Find the length of A, G. Not only that, let's find the midpoint, okay? The midpoint of AG. Alright? Let's find the midpoint also. Midpoint of AG equals, okay? Put that into practice and see what we get. Well, where's A? It's at 0, 0, 0, isn't it? Woo -hoo -hoo. That's simple. So we're going to be subtracting 0, 0, 0 from G, negative 2, 4, 3, right? And we're going to be dividing these by 2. So this becomes really simple. This is just negative 1, 2, and 1.5. Okay, so the midpoint's simple because when we add this to this, this is all we have. Okay? Now then, let's get the distances. Okay, the distances are going to be what? We've got a 0 in here, and we're going to take negative 2 and square it, plus a 4 and square it, plus a 3 and square it. <coughs> square root of 4 plus 16 plus 9 equals square root of 29 equals, oh, let me see, that's going to be 5 something, isn't it? Okay. 29, square root of it is 5.39. 5.39. Okay? So this distance right here is 5.39. Okay? Alright. Looks like a little mess there, but that's the way that looks. I encourage you to get you some 3D graph paper or make some out of isometric dot paper and compete with your friends. You all give each other figures, where they start, where they end. All you need is just like this one, you just need one point. And say it starts at the origin, this is the other furthest point. Now draw me a, a prism, rectangular prism, that looks like that. And you compete with your friends and see who can do one the fastest. You hand your friend one, friend hands you one, y'all Y'all race and see who can do the fastest. Then label the points. And then also calculate the distance between the feathers points <coughs> and that midpoint. You want a real challenge. <coughs> Have them start somewhere besides the origin. Have them start off of the origin. Have them start over here. That becomes very challenging then as you look at 3D. This is the real world. This is where your math is going to be from now on, and this is what you really need to look at. Okay? These are your distance formula and your midpoint formula and the sample on doing those. That's how you do those. Pretty simple, just the way we've been doing them. All right, enjoy.